Okay, Dr. Sharkey, let's give this a go here. We're uh, having another round of COVID questions. First one we got is, uh, it's about being inside a, an indoor space. Question is, if you're in an indoor space for say multiple hours with a, a positive person, a, a COVID positive person, but you keep your distance, you keep your distance of six feet or more, um, is there evidence to suggest that that's still safe because you're keeping your social distance? Uh, actually, no, that, that is not safe. So somebody is test positive for COVID-19, they should be in what we call self-isolation. So nobody should be within six feet of them or within the same room with them. Um, so the answer to that question is, is no, that is not a safe scenario for, for any, any amount of time. So the, if you're COVID positive, you're supposed to be in self-isolation, which means you're, you're in your room, using your own bathroom, your own bedroom, and somebody is dropping off meals outside your door. Um, that being said, if that is, if you are healthy enough, not so sick with the virus that you don't need more intense medical attention. But if you are like, fortunately, the vast majority of people who get COVID-19, either asymptomatic or have mild symptoms, you should be self-isolating away from everyone. And you should not have anybody with, in your room with you, six feet, 10 feet, any of it. So the second question we had um, said, if, if uh, someone's COVID test came back negative, you know, how often should you be tested to ensure the, the safety for the people around you, like your family? Should it be monthly? Is there a, a good uh, measurement for how often you should be tested if you get a, a negative test result? No amount of testing is going to give you a pass to know that you're 100% safe to be around anybody. A negative test just tells you that at the moment that you were tested, that no virus was detected in you, that you were not actively infected at that moment. The virus could be in your body replicating, but just not being expressed yet. Um, when you were tested, you can come up, you can be testing negative in the morning and be symptomatic in the afternoon and test positive. Uh, or test negative in the morning and in the afternoon, be shedding virus and be asymptomatically infected. So no amount of testing is gonna give you that reassurance, unfortunately. I wish there was something that did um, right now that something's going to be a vaccine, which, you know, as at the time we're recording this, this hopefully within the next month, we're gonna have our first doses arrive in Northwest Arkansas, which is very exciting. Indeed. All right, Dr. Sharkey, uh, so what is the infectious dose for this SARS-CoV-2? That is something that we do not know at this point in time. Um, right now, the, we have not gotten that exact microgram number down. Um, and there's no way that you can measure how much virus the person that might be infected with you has and is spewing next to you. So I don't know that it's a useful number for us right now clinically. I think somewhere down the road, we will, we will learn that number and it will be interesting. But right now when we are clinically dealing with this virus, that dosage is not known and is not really gonna be useful information. Um, the dosages that we are learning are the dosages uh, that we're gonna need for our vaccines. Um, and for instance, Pfizer's vaccine is 30 micrograms of the mRNA and Moderna's is 100 micrograms. So we know those doses and those are, those are good, exciting doses to know. All right, Dr. Charky, we had a question here I have to do with uh, periods of time. So say you come into contact with someone who's tested positive, this person wanted to know, you know what's a general period of time that someone could be contagious if they've contacted somebody who's you know, tested positive? Well, that one's a hard question to answer, but let's just go over kind of the timeline. So when, when somebody tests positive, they are considered contagious for the next 10 days from the time they either test positive or when their symptoms develop. And then 10 days from there, and then they need to be symptom free for 24 hours. So say you test positive because you developed a little sniffly nose and sore throat one day. So that would be your day zero. And then, so for the next 10 days, you're considered to be contagious. 
And then if your symptoms resolve on day eight, you're still considered contagious for 10 days. But let's say you feel bad for two weeks, then you're still considered to be contagious through those two weeks plus 24 hours after your symptoms resolve. So if you have been notified that you've been in close contact with somebody um, during their contagious time, then you are to quarantine for 14 days from the date of the exposure. Now, unfortunately right now, contact tracing is kind of delayed. So I've had some people that have told me they got notified that they had been exposed, but it had been more than 14 days ago. So they, in some cases, they didn't know that they had been exposed and had been going about their daily lives. In some cases, in others, they knew they had been exposed and had actually quarantined for their 14 days like they should. We're very grateful for those people. Um, but then they kind of get on the phone with the health department and the contact tracer. They're like, yeah, we know, we're quarantined, we're done. And the contact tracer still has to do their job and ask them all the questions. They just want to kind of get off the phone because it's, it's kind of a mute point at that point. Unfortunately, right now with the delays we're starting to see with testing again and getting test results and how overworked and overburdened our contact tracers are, we are starting to see scenarios like that, kind of like we did this past summer. And I think we're gonna see more going into the holidays, unfortunately. But back to the question, 10 days plus symptom-free for a day is your time period for, to be contagious. Uh, if you have symptoms for longer than that, you're supposed to stay in isolation until your symptoms resolve plus another 24 hours. And then if you've known you've been in contact with somebody that's tested positive or symptomatic, you have a 14 day frame, time frame in which you need to quarantine. All right, Dr. Charkey, last question here. Um, if you've got symptoms of COVID, is it a bad idea to take an over-the-counter decongestant or an expectorant? So first thing, if you have symptoms of COVID, you need to go get tested. That's step one. Um, and then step two, a decongestant is fine. A lot of people are suffering from a lot of congestion. It's been a very major complaint. Um, and then as far as an expectorant, that one's a little bit difficult because an expectorant's going to kind of increase what you're coughing out and increase the viral spread. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend an expectorant. A humidifier would be wonderful. Um, anything to make your throat feel better, you know, and kind of going back to the old-fashioned remedies, warm tea with honey, um, anything, <laughs> pardon me, like me, that's soothing on your throat um, is, is recommended. Um, but an expectorant, I would be, I'd be a little bit more careful with, you know, obviously if you're home alone, that would be fine. Um, but if you're quarantining with your family of five, that might, might cause some issues when you're trying to keep, keep your children safe or your spouse safe. So I would, I would be a little bit more cautious with the expectorant. 